Now, let's see how GFR changes in the case of alterations in a net filtration pressure. Excessive loss of water when a patient is dehydrated in case of diarrhea causes the protein to be concentrated in a blood. Increased protein concentration as seen in the case of diarrhea increases oncotic pressure in the glomerular capillaries suppose up to 34 millimeters of mercury. It is very important to know that oncotic pressure in the glomerular capillaries is the force opposing filtration. Again, in order to calculate the net filtration pressure, let us put these values to our formula. 45, uh, which is the hydrostatic pressure in the glomerular capillaries under normal condition, minus 34, minus 8, which is hydrostatic pressure in a Bowen space. This plugged into our equation equals 3 millimeters of mercury. And this is a very low net filtration pressure which leads to a decreasing GFR. Also, protein concentration increases in case of excessive vomiting or sweating. In opposite case, when a patient is infused with saline or drinks a lot of water, the protein concentration in blood decreases which leads to decreasing oncotic pressure in the glomerular capillaries. Suppose it drops down to 15 millimeters of mercury. Again, putting these values to our formula, we get 22, and this is a very high net filtration pressure, which leads to increasing GFR. So this happens in a patient with liver failure and nephrotic syndrome. This brings us to a very important question. If the main driving force for GFR is the hydrostatic pressure, what is the main driving force behind the reabsorption at the proximal tubule? Because you have to know that certain amount of water and sodium will be reabsorbed back to the blood vessels, especially via the peritubular capillaries. It is very important to know that the fact that we have reabsorption in the peritubular capillaries is because of a very high protein concentration there. This creates a very high oncotic pressure in the peritubular capillaries equal to, uh, let's say, 29 millimeters of mercury. And you know very well that oncotic pressure is the force which promotes reabsorption. The protein is concentrated here because as blood passes through the glomerulus, it filtrates 20% of its plasma without protein. To calculate net reabsorption, we take 7, which is the hydrostatic pressure in the peritubular capillaries, from 29, which is the oncotic pressure. So we got 22 millimeters of mercury, which would be the net reabsorption pressure in the peritubular capillaries. So again, to sum it up, the force that is driving reabsorption at the proximal tubule is the oncotic pressure in the peritubular capillaries. In some cases, we would have to increase oncotic pressure in order to increase water reabsorption. For example, in case of nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. It is very important to know that under normal conditions, antidiuretic hormone acts on antidiuretic hormone receptor of cells collecting dogs and retains water by increasing reabsorption here. In nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, antidiuretic hormone receptors at the collecting dog are not functioning. As a consequence, the patient loses free water and gains sodium developing hypernatremia. So in order to correct this, we have to increase water reabsorption and correct the hypernatremia. The thiazide diuretics are exactly what we need. The thiazide diuretics inhibit sodium chloride transporters in a distal convoluted tubule, which in turn results in decreasing reabsorption of sodium and chloride and water in distal convoluted tubule. 
more sodium and chloride go beyond the distal convoluted tubule. And water, of course, also follows them. Loss of water and reduction of extracellular volume with a thiazide diuretic increases blood protein concentration and peritubular oncotic pressure, which in turn increases water reabsorption in a proximal tubule. The elevated water reabsorption along with the sodium loss in the urine corrects the hypernatremia. Finally, let's see what happens with the GFR if the hydrostatic pressure in a bone space increases. If a patient has a urinary tract obstruction such as blocked ureter or urethra, the urine floor is disturbed and pressure in a tubular lumen builds up. Increased hydrostatic pressure of the Bowman space which opposes filtration causes decreasing GFR. This will lead to post-renal failure.